So this happened. Got I'm reeling in it. That's a giant, dude. He's hot, too. That was reeling in the jerk bait. Dude, he crossed its nose. Like a six and a half pounder. How about it, boys? <laughs> Welcome to Mikey Ball Fishing, homies and homettes. We are going to analyze a small, tiny, minute adjustment that you can make to your jerkbait fishing because a jerkbait is a perfect bait for this time of year fall to winter transition and even into winter. It's a small little adjustment that's super simple, but will probably get you some more bites and actually it takes a load off. You know how you get that bad elbow when you're jerkbait fishing all day long? It'll take a load off you. Hit that like and subscribe button, let's get to it. So first off, I got all my jerkbaits right here. I got a whole bunch of them. I've actually been hanging out with my buddy Jacob Wall quite a bit and he is an obsessed jerkbaiter. That kid with a jerkbait and a frog is absolutely unstoppable and it's really kind of driven me to learn more about jerkbait bait fishing we did some of it in florida and i've done some during the winter here but i want to get better just like all of us i want to get better at my craft understand some of the nuances and so what we were using in that first video that you saw is a pretty i don't know pretty classic presentation we always talk about the the vision 110 the mega bass it's got a whole line of them. oh i gotta show you guys real quick i did a terrible thing i hit this guy against my trolling motor and and knocked the bill off they don't make that jerk bait anymore and i gotta send a shout out to my to my buddy he actually gave me this jerk bait which mega bass does not make anymore but what you're going to notice right off the bat is these are gold right normally we talk about like normal color shad colors maybe something with green these guys are gold they're almost florida jerk baits so both of these are vision 110 mega bass jerk baits um not the 110 plus one just your classic 110 they're gold in sort of a reflective pattern i think this is kind of like a perch kind of pattern right there pretty cool looking super detailed and then this guy is a champagne sort of pattern super cool got like a blue back little orange belly got the fine little hooks on there the other jerk bait we we're using is this guy it's the berkeley stunner basically this is very comparable to the the 110 um, it has the same style body, pretty much the same coffin style lip, has a little, little bit different action, maybe a little harder sort of jut back and forth. Um, it casts just a hair better, if I'm being totally honest, and the price point is a little bit better. I'll put links to all these down at Tackle Warehouse for you guys to go check out. So we're basically using two different jerk baits. The Berkeley Stunner, I think this is the 112, so it's a little bit bigger too. This is the 112, and then we're using a classic Mega Bass, 110. So that's the equipment we're using. I was using it on a rod. You can really jerk bait with a wide range of rods. Personally, I like to use something like this. This is a seven foot medium um, Halo TI. I run all my jerk baits on pretty much 12 pound tests. This is another new jerk bait I'm trying. It's the Yozuri. It dives pretty deep, actually. Stay tuned for a video on that. But we're running 12 pound test. The big trick with this little adjustment that you're going to make to your jerk bait fishing is you want to make sure you have a rod that has a pretty soft tip. You're really use, usually using that with your jerkbait anyways because you want to impart action onto that jerkbait, but you don't want to overfish it, especially as the water gets cooler. You don't want it, you don't want it jerking too fast, for lack of a better word, and a stiff tip rod will do that. The other thing too is oftentimes these fish will just kind of take the slack out of your line. You don't want to pull the jerkbait away. Um, as you'll notice on the Vision 110s, especially, they have super fine hooks very sort of tiny little kind of minute sort of I don't know thin wire hooks so you don't want to open up or bend those hooks either so you want to rob that whoa whoa those hooks got way too close to my personal areas <laughs> that was that was awesome that would have been a good like uh what do you call it like Mikey Balls fails 
You don't want a rod the, that, that's gonna pull that bait away or bend those fine wire hooks. So use something, maybe it's a composite crankbait rod. Highly recommend something seven foot, seven one, somewhere in that range. And then I have a Shimano SLX. This is a seven two one. It's a little faster reel because I wanna be able to pick up slack, but at the same time, I don't wanna over reel it because that's gonna be one of the tricks with this adjustment. So if you guys watch that, that clip um, really closely, You'll, you'll notice something. So we were on some, some schooling fish or some fish that were kind of potting up. Um, basically what they were doing is like any jerkbait bite, they were in a little deeper water, 10, 12, 14 foot, laying around the bottom. And these fish basically would be triggered by that jerkbait darting back and forth and come up from the bottom. Oftentimes you're looking for, for creek channels, ditches, just depth. If, you don't, if you're not on a reservoir or an impoundment, maybe like that, that cut that kind of goes back into a bay, you're looking for sort of that secondary but main lake style structure kind of going into those back pockets. And these fish were sort of activated coming up and feeding on bait because a lot of that bait was rising to the top, which is what you see either in late fall, mid fall when it balls up, but you also see it during sunny days in winter when that bait actually rises toward the, war the warming water and that but here's the big trick. A lot of times and classically, when it comes to jerkbait fishing, you know, you're out there with your buddy, you're like, ch -ch 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 -ch. It, ch -ch -ch. Uh, you're like a soft plastic jerkbait, a hard jerkbait, you're basically jerking it. And it's all about cadences, dude. Like jerk hard, jerk soft, jerk three times, jerk four. This is getting filthy, right? Like you get the idea though. So it's all about cadences and pauses. So one, two, three, let it sit. One, two, three, let it sit. One, let it sit. So what I found is oftentimes when you're doing that jerk, it, it creates a very wide gate with your jerk bait. So your jerk bait's going to sort of have a very wide back and forth cut, almost like a spook, you know, when you really jerk a spook hard, it'll dart right, it'll dart left. What I found is these fish wanted a very active momentarily type of presentation and then they wanted to stop and that's when they eat it and that's when they usually eat a jerk bait so what i started doing instead of that classical kind of jerking pause retrieve i couldn't move it fast enough to sort of activate those fish a lot of times we were on like gunnersville a lot of times those fish are very reactive you know you need to trigger them so what we actually did is instead of jerking it I'd impart like three or four reels, which would basically make this, this bait sort of dart and at points it would hunt. So kind of like a chatterbait, you know, it's going forward, shaking, and then it darts out. So instead of just a back and forth wide retrieve, we were reeling it, the jerk bait's shimmying and then it would wash out and then come back and then we would stop reeling. It reminded me a lot of how we fish like a hair jig or if you're burning like a, a small swim bait, like a Kai Tech or a little easy for schooling fish where you reel it really fast for two seconds, maybe put one more pulse reel on there and then you stop and you let it. And that's when those fish eat it. And so it's something small and it's a tiny adjustment you can try because the other thing we run into too, especially as we get into winter, you're really, you're fishing a jerkbait all day long, dude. And it's exhausting. Like it's not so much tiresome from a physical standpoint, but it tires out your elbow, it tires out your arm. And it's, it's not always good for your elbow, dude. Like you don't want to be making this motion all the time. So what you can do is you can use this to impart sort of that, that quick darting action on your bait without having to make that motion and really kind of exhaust yourself. Cause I don't know about you, but if you throw on a jerk bait for eight hours, dude, try doing it the next day for another eight hours, you're, you're washed out, dude. Like you're asking for them to bite another bait because your arm doesn't move, man. And this is a great way to impart that sort of darting action without having to move your arm. Plus, what's really cool is, like I said, it really makes the bait shimmy differently. It's not as wide of a gate darting back and forth. It's very much a tight little wobble darting around. And every once in a while, if you're using the correct jerk bait, kind of like the Stunner or that, that Vision 110, you'll get that sort of hunting washout action, which is really what triggers them. The same and then something different. And then that pause, and they absolutely crush it. It's a great way to mix it up, show them something different. They're so used to seeing that, that back and forth sort of figure eight jerking motion and that, that standard cadence, either a one, two or a one, two, three with a pause. That reeling, just look at it a lot as like hair jig fishing, like put some of those fast reels on it and try a gold. 
you'd be surprised. I was fishing in pretty clear water and the gold, for some reason, I don't know if it's a Gunnersville thing, I know it's a Florida thing, gold is absolutely a spectacular color, especially that reflective gold. I do like something with a little bit of breakup on it, something along those lines. This is perch pattern. There are a few perch in Gunnersville, but I think it's more or less to break up just a continual flash, so it's not as obtrusive in that clear water. But give this thing a try. Grab yourself a gold jerk bait, Stunner 112 or the, the Vision 110 um, and reel. In, you know, instead of your jerking motion, make a long cast, maybe draw it down there a little bit, and then reel three reels fast, pause, four reels fast, pause. You know, and play with how long your pauses are, but use that reeling motion instead of that jerking motion to impart that sort of darting and hunting action on that jerk bait. And I think you'll be surprised by the results and your elbow will love you, I promise you that. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you guys got anything to add to this jerk bait technique and jerk bait adjustment, let me know. Let me know if you tried it, because I guarantee you some of you guys, I totally stumbled across it. I literally was casting it on these fish and I was reeling up my bait to get it to cast to another fish that I saw popped up and that six and a half seven pounder absolutely crushed it and i'm like huh maybe there's something to do that so i kept doing it and i kept catching fish and that's how we figure out all these really cool patterns hope you guys enjoyed this we'll see you back out on the water or from the garage talking fishing tight lines